The Islamic State, or ISIS, doesn't represent 1.5 billion Muslims. Many Muslims have repudiated it. However, 30,000 Muslims from all over the world have joined it because it presents itself as the truest embodiment of Islam. And those who repudiate it have not been able to counter its appeal. The Islamic State is self-consciously Islamic. In June 2014, a video circulated of a masked Islamic State commander telling a cheering crowd, by Allah, we embarked on our jihad only to support the religion of Allah. Allah willing, we will establish a state ruled by the Quran and the Sunnah. All of you honorable Muslims are the soldiers of the Muslim state. He promised that the Islamic state would establish the Sharia of Allah, the Quran, and the Sunnah, as the crowd repeatedly responded with cries of Allahu Akbar. The Islamic State's very public beheadings have horrified the world. In large part, they were responsible for the wave of public concern about ISIS in America that led to the initiation of U.S.-led airstrikes against the Islamic State. Many have taken them, the beheadings that is, as a sign for, the, for all its vaunted media savvy, the Islamic State will ultimately be undone by its own savagery, as the world will ultimately have had enough of this horror and will move to destroy ISIS once and for all. Why then? Does the Islamic State behead anyone, much less film the beheadings and post them on social media? Because, from their standpoint, beheadings are a recruitment tool, one that's rooted in the Quran. The Muslim holy book says very straightforwardly, when you meet the unbelievers, strike the necks. The Islamic State knows the young Muslims who are aware of that verse will not recoil in horror and disgust from their beheading videos, but rather they will realize that the Islamic State is acting in fidelity with the Quran. Thus, the beheadings will bolster the Islamic State's claim to constitute the new caliphate. The beheading videos also strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah, which is another quote from the Quran. Thus, as far as the jihadis of the Islamic State are concerned, the world's revulsion and disgust at their beheading videos are only confirmation that they're on the right track. On December 15, 2014, the Islamic State released a document entitled Clarification Regarding the Hudud, that is, punishments Allah specifies in the Quran. This was essentially the Islamic State's penal code, and every aspect of it was drawn from Islamic teaching. The clarification mandates death for blasphemy against Allah or Muhammad. It specifies that murder with stealing will be punished by death and crucifixion of the dead body. Murder alone will be punishable by just simply death. Stealing, as part of banditry, will be rewarded with the amputation of the right hand and the left leg, and terrorizing people will result in exile. All these penalties and more are derived from this particular Quranic verse. Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger, and strive upon the earth corruption, is none but they be killed or crucified, or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides, or that they be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world, and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment, except for those who return before you apprehend them and know that Allah is forgiving and merciful. In fact, every last one of the Islamic State's penalties line up with the Quran and Muhammad's words in the Hadith. In so scrupulously carrying out the commands of their faith, the Muslims of the Islamic State have sought to buttress their claim to be the new caliphate. It's the basis of their appeal.